Ladies and gentlemen, accepting a plaque for that great, that great mean stamping baseball team, Mr. Tommy Armstrong. Wendell and Marcella, this is for you. You know, two years ago, I had the privilege of uh, attending Wendell's induction here in the Hall of Fame. And at that time, uh, I witnessed a couple of pretty neat speeches, a, a witty and insightful induction speech by Tuck Bedford. And uh, Terry Fillion DeLude, who's uh, Jay's sister, probably imparted the most poignant and elegant speech I've ever heard in this type of venue. So I'm telling you, I'm, I'm intimidated right now. <laughs> On top of the fact that we've had just some absolutely wonderful uh, acceptance speeches today already, and very emotional ones, uh, like Mike Morley, uh, another mean stamper. All the other people had papers. Think I can do this in five minutes? <laughs> I'll try. All right. Wendell seemed to know, I think, in the winter that he was going to have a good baseball team. He would pick me up for breakfast on Saturdays at 6 in the morning. Now, you know, I grew up in Saginaw, city boy. I like to sleep in. He was a farmer from Hemlock. And we'd go to breakfast, and before you know it, we'd be out on the road, and we'd be at the baseball fields with snow cover on them, talking baseball, getting ready for the season. So I, I, I think he had a pretty good idea. I think Al mentioned that, too. We just, they just kind of knew that this team was going to come together. As the season wore on, it was obvious, like I said in the video, that it, um, they refused to lose. I could use other cliches about magical seasons and so forth, but no, this team just flat refused to lose. They were tough. During the regular season, we had just some epic battles with Midland Legion team. We came from behind a couple of times to beat them, and then we went into that district tournament. And there, like, Mar uh, like Brett said, Mark Luplo's cousin hit probably the most famous home run in the history of mean stamping. We were losing one to nothing to Gross Point Woods. They had a pitcher who was drafted in the sixth round by Chicago, threw in the low 90s. We had the bases loaded. I knew it was less than two outs. And uh, Mark just blasted one. And I mean, when he hit it, I think pretty much everyone knew it was out. I remember being at third base doing my best Gene Lamont imitation, trying to tell the person, tag, tag, tag. I don't even remember who it was, but that person knew it was out, knew it was gone, went over the center field fence. And if you, you know, it was that, which eventually was named Wendell Field, if you've ever been there, it was a pretty darn good pope. From there, boom, we took off. We got to uh, the regionals and Marshall. Marshall, small little band box. It'd be like batting at Camden Yards or Yan the new Yankee Stadium launching pad. And Jay pitched the first ball game against Flint, and who always had great teams, coached by Walt Head, you know, Saginaw Valley's coach. And they'd won the national championship before, and he just shut them right down. We were off to a good start. And then <clears throat> we seemed to hit a little bit of a snag against Battle Creek. Well, I'll tell you what, we get to the bottom of the last inning, the base is loaded, and there are two outs. Ron Hennick is at bat. I believe Brian Chris is at third base, runs about a 6'7", uh, 60. Mike Lutz is at second base, 6'7", 60. Keith Miller at first base, 6'7", 6'6", 60. Ron drills a ground ball between first and second, gets through for a base hit. Well, being at third base, uh, there's no way I wasn't going to send Mike a second with his speed. And as Keith comes around to third, and this is two outs, they, uh, their uh, right fielder threw the ball over the catcher's head. Well, at Marshall being a small field, the backstop was also closer than 60 feet, which is really regulation distance. The ball went all the way back to the backstop, and I'm kind of like this, holding Keith, knowing we've got the game scored. Boom. Right on by me. Scored. Winning run, just like that. And Keith had great instincts for that. From there, we just tore through the regional and went on to the Connie Mack World Series. Now, Unfortunately, I couldn't follow the team to the uh, World Series because I was laid off like about 50 other of us from Bridgeport that year. Coach Gray, bless his heart, lost a lot of basketball staff. Coach Walter Zach lost football staff, but 
was a sign of the times. It wasn't as rough as it is today, but it was rough. And so I had to call Brad. I talked to him this last week to get some recollection and some memories of some things that went on uh, in New Mexico and then go along with that with what Wendell had uh, given me. And Brett said um, the probably uh, the turning point of it was an 11-inning uh, game that they beat Georgia after they'd lost finally their first game of the season in this double elimination tournament. And after that, they went on to beat New York to win the World Series. And I asked him, I said, okay, Brett, what else? And he said, well, he said a couple of things. He said, my dad was glad the season was over because he'd thrown so much batting practice he thought his arm was going to fall off. And Al, I used to share that duty with Al, but I, again, I didn't, wasn't able to go along with him. And then he said he'd never seen Skipper, which is Wendell, run so fast as to jump out of the dugout and go get the championship trophy, which um, is out in the corner over there uh, by the bar over there if you'd like to see it um, after these ceremonies. Right now, I'd like to uh, recognize some of the uh, players very quickly. Uh, we had Brian Abel. He was a hard-throwing lefty. And uh, when he hit his spots, he was our Max Scherzer. Brian Beeg, a right-handed pitcher. He was kind of our Al, er, Al Albuquerque, except he didn't kiss baseballs. We had Dan Cronkite, a left-handed hitter, uh, drafted for the tournament. He hit for both power and average. Rob Irvin. Uh, uh, another tournament draft, a good right-handed hitter, hard-nosed player. Wendell liked those type of players. Dan Hare was here tonight, our everyday catcher. He possessed a sweet swing. He was a double machine. He was one of our leaders. Dan was one of our leaders. And Ron Henneke. He, play, he played like Miguel Cabrera. Kind of looked like him back then, too. Had a round face, impy smile, sparkling eyes. Teams were flat afraid to pitch to him. And in the first Continent Mac World Series in 78, at 16, he hit two home runs in the first inning, two home runs in the first inning. The third time he came up to bat, it was about the third inning, then or second inning, the uh, right fielder for Puerto Rico was right against the fence. <laughs> he ended up being uh, Connie Mac uh, most valuable player uh, when we won the championship. We had Brian Chris, who plays center field. Blazing speed, leadoff hitter, good bunner, excellent arm, set the table. Had Dave LaPrairie, left-handed pitcher, phenomenal ball movement, great breaking ball. Jim Leibinger here tonight, our closer, threw in the 90s. He just absolutely shut down other teams. It was like bringing in uh, Mariano Rivera or somebody. He was going to shut them down. And I remember Wendell telling me that the guy from New York just shook his head and said, well, man, when you brought in that reliever, we knew it was all over. We have Brett Luplo, the consummate hitter. Tough out, hit for power, hit for average. He knew the situation every time he came up to bat. He was, uh, I think, played for Wendell for about, what, three or four years, Brett? And um, he was, again, another one of our team leaders, both by actions and words. Mark Luplo, tough as nails, hit probably the most famous home run in the history of mean stamping. Mike Lutz, a complete player. An another burner, excellent drag bunner, extremely strong and accurate arm from right field, could pitch if needed. And I think a lot of that uh, goes to our uh, the assistant coach, Al Luplo, who our outfielders threw better than the Tigers throw right now. They did. Keith Miller, probably the most instinctual baseball player I had the privilege to coach. He made it fun to coach third base. Jay Fillion, here tonight, means version of Cliff Lee. Great feel for pitching, could throw all of his pitches for strikes. Phenomenal pickoff move. I don't think they mentioned also that I believe he picked off about four or five people in that same game that he, he pitched a no-hitter. Craig Fagason here tonight, big guy. About the same size as Doug Fister, pitched like Doug Fister. Nice, easy delivery, through in the low 90s. Sometimes I don't think he was appreciated enough. Tom Vermeesh, another right-handed pitcher, pitched like Greg Maddox for us. And Mark Warner, uh, uh, all stater from Bridgeport. I uh, had an opportunity to coach Mark in high school and then on the means team. Left-handed hitter, uh, a great nice short string, uh, swing, and I sprayed the ball to all fields. Always hit for high average. For Wendell, I think the record speaks for itself. 
Like I said before, he was a, uh, he was a second father to me. In my opinion, he had the managerial skills capable of success at the professional level. And you know what? That man never forgot a name or a face. And I think a lot of you out there know that. And I don't know how he did it to this day. Al Luplo. Wow. To be a part of a coaching staff and absorb Al's knowledge was priceless. He coached his butt off that year and it showed. We were polished. A comment by a college coach, um, assistant college coach that year when he saw us uh, warm up and do our routine before the game said that probably was the best coached amateur team he had ever seen. I mentioned all the players. There's one other member of this team that will never be in a photo, will never be on a roster, and that's Marcella Namer. I'd like to mention that she was just a gracious host for numerous players and parents and scouts and college coaches at their home. And she also was a great scorekeeper. And it was kind of funny to watch her argue with Wendell over when they'd go over the books after the game, after we were having a refreshment at his house. And she had some valid points. She was a conduit between parents and uh, what the, uh, trying to tell them what the coaches were trying to accomplish, as well as a guide through the tournament and into New Mexico and Farmington. She was, and <clears throat> means also lost another dear coach this year. I want to mention that is Ed Kowalski. I didn't think I'd get emotional, Mike. I miss Wendell. I think all of you know we lost Wendell. He was a dear friend. Our boys called him Uncle Wendell. And I think this means team of 80, which was a legend in our household. Wendell would come and have coffee drop in at the dro you know, drop of a dime, never know when. And all of these players were mentioned. And they became heroes to my sons. And he had a lot to do with, I think, our son's success. I was lucky my second son was able to play for Wendell for four years. Closing remarks. I'd like to thank my wife, and for Al, I'd like to thank his wife for allowing us to help Wendell, the coach, to spend all that time away from the family and things like that that Coach Skillman talked about. I'd like to thank Means Industries for 40 years of sponsorship and probably over a million dollars spent on that team. I want to congratulate Mike Morley, former Means member. And by the way, his dad, Keith, he enjoyed the hospitality at Namer's house because he wouldn't go home until about 3 in the morning. <laughs> and poor Wendell got up about 4.30 to go open the shop at Means, and I know Keith went to work after that. Me being a teacher and it was a summer, I still got my eight hours in. <laughs> this Saginaw County Hall of Fame and for representing all stampers. I want to thank you for inducting us into the Hall of Fame. It means a lot, and I know that why don't Marcel, Marcel up there appreciate it. Thank you. Those players that are here, could you line up right in front and receive your certificates, please? <laughs> Coach Luplo, please come up too. Got certificates for all the players that are up here. As you can see, a little grayer, a little thinner.
tonight's program, there's a story I wrote on uh, Coach Wendell Namer on page 80. He meant a lot to a lot of people, including these gentlemen in front of me. Ladies and gentlemen, could I have a round of applause for these gentlemen on that means stamping national championship Connie Mack baseball team.